Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So about a week and a half ago, somewhere about there, I posted on Instagram about a package that I was super excited to get. And I said, I'm gonna do a thing. But I didn't share what it was. I said I would share about it that coming week, except I never <laughs> shared about it. Just kind of forgot, got busy with things. What can I say, I'm human. So, here is the footage that I filmed that very day, moments after I took that photo. So I just got done going to the post office and had a semi-surprise. I had a package that I was expecting. I knew it was on its way, but it wasn't actually supposed to be here for a few days yet, but it was there already and I'm super excited. Uh, when I showed it to Mr. Smith and opened it up, he goes, teleworking needs to stop. <laughs> because I ordered some hatching eggs. Oh, I'm super excited. So several years ago, I learned about this breed of chicken called Icelandic. And I have wanted to have Icelandic chickens ever since I heard of them. And so I decided, you know what? There's a lot of people who order eggs off the internet and do it with success. And I figured, why not give it a try? So the eggs came in the mail. I ordered a dozen, but the farm that sent them to me actually sent me two eight packs so that there's a little bit of extra space, you know, as a buffer on the side and they sent a couple extra eggs just in case a couple of them are duds or get damaged or anything like that and so the reason i wanted to get these icelandic chickens is they are ancient chickens they've been around forever they're they're considered viking chickens but what really drew me to them was they are a foraging chicken they are a chicken that would rather forage for bugs. I mean, you think of all the reasons why people want to keep guineas, other than being a natural alarm system, but a lot of people like to keep guineas for all of the bugs and all of that that they consume. Well, Icelandic chickens are like that. And you also get the perk of the eggs, of course. And now I'm raising from eggs. We're gonna be hatching these out and hopefully they all do well. Um, but of course they're not sorted. Don't know if we'll get males or females. We don't know what the ratio will be. And Mr. Smith was like, you know, that would be really terrible if we got all roosters. <laughs> so I don't think I don't think we need to worry about that, but hopefully uh, the ratio does swing in the hen direction, but we will just have to wait and see. So I don't have a big incubator that can handle all of these eggs, but I do have two small incubators so i'm just going to split them in half do eight and one and eight and the other and three weeks from now we'll see what happens Uh, yeah, twice a day, morning and evening. So like X up, X down. Oh. You put that one down there also? Yeah, I'll just put them in the same spot. It's kind of out of the way. Get up there. Where does just come from? About a week, and then I'll candle them, see where we have growth, see how many fur we've got. 
So that day we put the eggs in the incubators and we had received 16 eggs, which is more than these incubators can handle or more than one of them could handle. Uh, this particular magic fly, this little yellow one down here, this one can hold about a dozen. That one can hold nine chicken eggs. And the great thing about that one, and that one is also made by magic fly, it's called the auto egg incubator. That one actually rotates the eggs uh, automatically, which is great, but it can only hold nine. So we started out with the 16 eggs. I had eight in this incubator and eight in that incubator. Well, we gave it several days so that we could then candle the eggs, see how many of them were fertile, because it is very common when you get eggs that they're not all going to be fertile. That's just the way it is. So we went through, we candled them, and all but four of them were fertile. So I had ordered a dozen, received four extra, and ended up with a dozen that were actually fertile. So I didn't see any point in having two incubators going when all 12 of them could fit in this incubator. So I just turned that one off, put them all over here, and this one is manual, so I do have to go in here a couple times a day, turn the eggs over, not a big deal. I just do it in the morning when I come into the kitchen to fix my first cup of coffee. And then I do it again in the evening before bed. So a couple times a day we come in here. And this is my little candling tool here. It's, it's basically a little, well, it's not plugged in. It's basically just a little flashlight that you plug into the wall. Uh, it's got this little kind of rubber bumper thing. You put the egg right up against it. It shines the light through the egg and you can see the chick inside moving around in there. And so I candle the eggs every few days. Um, not, not too, too often just because I want to make sure there's still life in there, make sure it's progressing well and all of that. I candled them again this morning. All 12 of the eggs are looking fantastic. You could see the little chick in there moving around. Every so often you would see a foot come up against the, against the shell. It is just one of the coolest things ever. So I think I will try and set up my camera maybe this evening after it gets dark outside and try and candle a couple eggs on camera so that you can see it. And uh, it would be really cool if you could see what I can see. I don't know how well it will show up, but I'll give it a try.